Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Judah Kwon Kao, and I am an assistant professor um, at the Division of Infectious Diseases Department of Medicine, University of Ottawa, and associate scientist at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute. Today, I will be talking about monoclonal antibodies as COVID-19 prophylaxis in immunocompromised nations. Monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that are made in the lab, uh, mimicking the uh, antibodies produced by B cells. The term monoclonality uh, indicates that uh, it has a, a single epitope target, so it can recognize uh, one type of epi uh, epitope or antigen. It has fewer side effects. It has been used um, for various uh, therapeutic and diagnostic purposes. Monoclonal antibodies in COVID-19 um, are made to target the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, they block its attachment to the human uh, angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 receptors, thereby inhibiting viral entry. These monoclonal antibodies have shown to prevent hospitalization and death in many randomized control trials of patients at high risk of poor outcomes. Emerging variants, however, um, rendered monoclonal antibodies becoming ineffective. The four uh, monoclonal antibodies that have been approved uh, by Health Canada, including citrovimab, pasirivimab, indomimab, Bablanivimab and Tixagivimab, Sivavimab. The first three uh, were indicated for, as a treatment of mild to moderate COVID-19 infection um, of whom who were at high risk of um, progressing to hospitalization and or death. Whereas the Tixagivimab um, was approved under the indication um, to be used as a pre-exposure prophylactic treatment for individuals who are immunocompromised or um, vaccination is not recommended. These are the uh, conditions um, passing the immunocompromising state. So patients who are on active treatment for solid tumor or hematological malignancies are considered having immunocompromised condition. Hematological cancer with poor responses to COVID-19 vaccines, um, despite not being on active treatment, is also considered having immunocompromised state. Solid organ transplant recipients and uh, or islet transplant recipients or people who are, and people who are taking immunosuppressive therapy are also considered immunocompromised. The others include the recipients of CAR T cell therapy or hematopoietic stem cell transplant, patients with moderate to severe primary immunodeficiency, such as severe combined immunodeficiency, um, common variable immunodeficiency, patients with advanced untreated HIV infection, and patients who are on the following uh, treatments, including high dose corticosteroids. And that is taking prednisone um, more than 20 milligrams or more than two weeks or equivalent. Despite advances in um, therapeutic uh, area for COVID-19 infection, there are still um, unmet needs in immunocompromised patients. And that is because um, vaccines, even though uh, are quite effective, in preventing COVID-19, I should say severe COVID-19 infection for general population, that efficacy um, is not as great in immunocompromised patients who uh, would need broader protection because they have inadequate levels of antibodies or SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell responses to vaccines. And these immunocompromised patients uh, still experience severe outcomes or die from COVID-19 as compared to infected non-immunocompromised patients. Monoclonal antibodies have successfully bolstered uh, immune responses to COVID-19 
they uh, also show reduced effective. However, they show reduced effectiveness against BA4, BA5 Omicron variant due to its specificity of immune support provided by these monoclonal antibodies. We recently um, did a review on monoclonal antibodies as COVID-19 prophylaxis therapy in immunocompromised patient populations in order to examine and summarize the latest literature regarding the effectiveness of monoclonal antibodies, and also to outline evidence from current real-world studies and randomized controlled trials by uh, examining the prevention of SARS-CoV-2 infection and all serious disease outcomes in immunocompromised patients. Um, this paper was just recently accepted at the International Journal of Infectious Diseases. So uh, from now on, I will go over the um, evidence that we have found and um, summarize in the paper. The first one that I will be talking about uh, is regarding bemlanivimab or bemlanivimab with etosivimab. So um, in the BLAZE-2 study, participants from nursing and assisted living facilities were randomized to receive a single dose of bemlanivimab at 4,200 4, milligrams or placebo. Bamlanivimab treatment significantly reduced the incidence of COVID-19 compared to placebo, 8.5% versus 15.2%. This study started before the spread of other variants in the United States and validated the use of neutralizing monoclonal antibodies as a protective passive immunotherapy against COVID-19. Following the publication of the BLAZE-2 study, the BLAZE-1 study was also published. The BLAZE-1 study consisted of uh, 1,035 patients um, with one or more risk factors for severe um, COVID-19 infection. The result shows that 2.1% of patients randomized to bamlanivimab and tocilumab um, compared to 7% uh, in the placebo group had COVID-19 related hospitalization. Defined as have needing acute care for more than 24 hours uh, or death from any cause by day 29. Only 2.1% of patients uh, received from the nivimab plus etosivimab versus 6.4% uh, were hospitalized with COVID-19. By day 29, zero patients who received bamlanivimab plus esocivimab had died compared to 10 um, of 517 patients in the placebo arm. Of these 10 deaths, nine were deemed to be COVID-19 related. Data from other research on common COVID-19 variants such as um, the B1351 or beta and P1 or gamma indicate in vitro resistance to monoclonal antibodies, um, including this to bamlanivimab and tocivimab. One real world uh, evidence study comparing the serum neutralization of Omicron sublineages, BA1 and BA2, in monoclonal antibodies showed that both etosivimab and bamlanivimab were inactive against BA1 and BA2. Next, um, we will go over sotrovimab, which uh, is derived from a patient with SARS-CoV-1 infection. It's an engineered human monoclonal antibody that can neutralize SARS-CoV-2. The comet I study uh, tested the efficacy of sotrovimab in reducing hospitalizations and all-cause all mortality in patients at high risk of COVID-19 progression. Compared to placebo, sotrovimab patients experience less hospitalization and or death, 1% versus 7% here, with 85% uh, relative risk reduction. Further, the rates of adverse and serious adverse events were lower in the treated patient's population compared to those in the placebo group. Real-world uh, evidence data from 
this study um, showed uh, mixed results of being effective and also being um, ineffective. For example, um, this first study, um, which was done um, in the uh, Delta predominantly uh, era, um, show that patients who were treated within the first 14 days of symptoms had lower progression grade. However, this uh, latter two studies show that the um, sotrovimab alone or in combination with remdesivir did not decrease in hospital mortality compared to placebo groups. Moving on to the next monoclonal antibody combo, tixagibimab and silgavimab, the TACO study or TACO trial explored the use of Tixa and Silga to prevent COVID-19 infection. This is a phase three randomized control trial, um, including 1,014 participants and divided into getting either Tixa Silga or placebo ecology. Uh, within seven days of symptom onset. These, are not, these were not hospitalized and vaccinated at all. The study concluded that a single intramuscular Tixacilga dose provided statistically and clinically significant protection against progression to severe COVID-19 infection or COVID-19 related deaths. The next trial, um, sorry, let's go back to the PROVENT trial. This trial um, included 5,000, about 5,200 participants who either had increased risk of COVID-19 exposure, uh, inadequate response to vaccination or both, and roughly 3% of total participants were on immunosuppressive therapy. Participants were randomized into uh, a two-to-one -two -one ratio to receive the Tixacilga or placebo. Amongst the Tixacilga group, at least uh, one adverse event was reported, 35% uh, percent of participants and versus 34% uh, in the placebo group. In terms of efficacy, the uh, Tixacilga reduced a risk of symptomatic COVID-19 infection by 77%. The incidence of infection in the study was uh, at 0.2%. The STORM CHESER trial was also a phase three trial that randomized 1,121 uh, SARS-CoV-2 exposed participants. So this is already uh, after someone exposed to um, patients with infection. Then they are uh, uh, they received the either Tixacilga or placebo to prevent the development of symptomatic COVID-19. So they found that symptomatic COVID-19 occurred in 3.1% of the Tixacilga group as compared to 4.6% in the placebo group. So that was just uh, about 33% relative risk reduction, and therefore um, it's actually not statistically significant. So there were data from RCTs, which included a small number of patients with immunocompromised conditions. So let's look at the um, some of the real world evidence. This study um, found that about, actually almost none of the immunocompromised vaccinated individuals who received early treatment um, progressed to having moderate to severe disease. In a cohort of patients with kidney transplant recipient, who did, uh, who did not have good humoral immune response after three doses of COVID-19 vaccine shows that the group who received Tixa and Silga significantly uh, low, having lower risk of symptomatic COVID-19 
infection, hospitalization, ICU, and deaths. This study found that 3.5% of vaccinated immunocompromised individuals in the Omicron wave who received Tixasoga compared to 7.2% uh, who did not receive Tixasoga prophylaxis developed COVID-19 infection. Likewise, this similar results were also shown in the VA setting and also in the solid organ transplant recipients. Nevertheless, there were studies that showed conflicting results as well. Nevertheless, there were studies that showed conflicting results as well. For example, this study in the um, hematological malignancy patient. They found that 150 milligram dose of Tixasoga did not prevent um, or did not neutralize Omicron or RBD as compared to the 300 milligram dose group. And that at 79 days uh, follow-up, two patients were tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 and both of them received the 150 milligram dose. Bellas et al. Um, showed that there was a modest decrease in bowel load at seven days post-treatment, whereas this study showed that solid organ transplant recipient participants who received Tixasoga had increased in BA2 neutralization capacity from 7% to 72% post-treatment. Moving on to the next combo of monoclonal antibodies, and that is regarding pasirubimab plus imdivimab. Pasirubimab and imdivimab are non-competing SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing monoclonal antibodies. Its efficacy was shown in this trial. Participants in this trial was, were randomized to 1,200 1, milligrams um, of the treatment or placebo. They found that 1.5% in the treatment group presented with symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection versus 7.8% in the placebo group with relative risk reduction of 81.4%. Subcutaneous uh, region cough effectively prevented symptomatic and asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infections in participants that were uninfected and free from recently acquired infection. Current variants of concerns were not addressed in this trial based on data obtained from neutralization assays. Pesarubimab plus imdivimab appears ineffective against the Omicron variant. In the recovery trial, comparing um, standard of care alone or standard of care plus pesarubimab and imdivimab showed that the treatment group reduced 28 days mortality in zero negative patients shown here, 24 versus 30% with the um, risk ratio of 0 0.79. For other regimens, there are also many reports. Some are um, showing neutralization capacity data and some um, are clinical outcomes data. The essence of these studies were that these monoclonal antibodies are inactive against BA2, BA4, and BA5. Patients received monoclonal antibody prophylaxis or specific anti-SARS-CoV-2 treatment usually did well as compared to those who did not. In addition, monoclonal antibodies as prophylaxis strategy were useful against Omicron in kidney transplant recipients with weak or no response to vaccine. This challenge, um, the data um, that showed um, in, vit in vitro uh, that monoclonal antibodies have reduced efficacy against new variants. In this study, there is no difference in deaths 
hospitalizations between casarivimab and nivimab versus uh, those who receive sotrovimab. But there is a lower need for oxygen administration observed in the sotrovimab group. This second study also showed that there was no signal of superiority of one treatment over another. And this study compared to monopiravir, nometrovir, retinavir, and sotrovimab. Lastly, the new monoclonal antibody, beptilovimab, also. Although it showed a uh, promising uh, neutralization capacity with the um, Delta and BA1, some of the uh, Omicron variants, uh, the clinical outcome data showed that beptilovimab uh, lacked efficacy in patients with BA2, BA5 variants. The clinical impact in Canada regarding the use of monoclonal antibodies um, are summarized, is summarized here. So the decision to administer monoclonal antibodies should be based on regional uh, prevalence of resistant variants, individual patient risks, available resources, and logistics. Uh, to date, um, the antiviral treatment um, are still uh, useful in treating immunocompromised patients with COVID infection and is still effective um, even in the Omicron era. Now, it is essential though to also understand the FC-mediated effects of monoclonal antibodies. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier that uh, some of the studies show signs of clinical improvement, um, even though that the in vitro study may show um, lower neutralization capacity of the monoclonal antibodies against the newer variants. Um, nevertheless, new neutralizing monoclonal antibodies should be designed to improve activity against SARS-CoV-2 and limit the development of resistant mutations. And there's uh, really an urgent need for a new RCTs in vaccinated immunocompromised subjects during current strains of COVID-19 to support development of more effective monoclonal antibodies. In summary, COVID-19 is highly transmit transmissible with potentially serious health outcomes, underscoring the need for effective prevention and treatment strategies. Immunocompromised populations need additional protective measures to strengthen immune response. Monoclonal antibodies are effective uh, with regards to COVID-19 prophylaxis, reducing COVID-19 progression and severe outcomes, reducing hospitalization and ICU admissions, and lowering the risk of death uh, from COVID-19 against strains that predate the Omicron BA2. Most monoclonal antibodies are ineffective at providing an immune response to Omicron strains post BA2. Historical evidence is promising, though, um, but these new variants are providing challenge, challenges um, to us. Recently, the FDA and provinces in Canada have found that Tixacilga, ineffective against Omicron variant, Mamlanivimab monotherapy was now revoked in the U.S. since April 2021 because of its low efficacy against newer COVID-19 variants. Um, but uh, interestingly, Strobimab has demonstrated some retained favorable clinical outcomes against the Omicron variant. And uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed um, this talk. Have a good day.